Hello, I am Inez Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create an awesome transforming looking introduction in Adobe After Effects, just like this one. Okay, so this introduction looks pretty epic, even though I say it myself, but if you don't want to follow this tutorial and you just want to change your logo and your text and get the same looking result that you just saw, that's also possible. You can buy this project file on my website. Um, link will be in the description and for a small fee, you can download this project and yeah, get your introduction very quickly. If you do want to follow this tutorial and know how this is done, let's get started. So right here, I'll create a new composition, make this 9020 by 1080, so full HD, um, main comp, I will say tutorial, uh, just so I know, because I'm making this in the same uh, directory that I have made the example in. Okay, so here we have our first composition. So let's right click, new solid, create a background, create a black background, okay. And then we're also going to create a new, well, actually we have our background. We can create a new solid, a new composition. I'm sorry, create a new composition and make this metal texture comp. And right here we are going to input some yeah, textures that we find online. So search on Google for metal textures, um, metal grunge textures. And I have found these two here. So I'm going to be using these two. So I'm going to scale down the first texture and then I'm going to add one more here and you can really stack it up. It's just to show you that you can get some different results by combining multiple uh, textures, change the mode to multiply and change the opacity by pressing T on the keyboard to 75%. And then we have a texture like this um, that gives it a little bit more grunge, but still has these scratches and I like this texture. So I'm going to use this one. Then I'm going to create a new composition again and change it to like a thousand by a thousand and rename this to logo and import your logo right here. So I'm going to be using mine here and this is my logo. I'm also going to change my resolution to full for now. And then I'm going to um, keep it at this size. So I'm actually going to make my composition smaller to 700 by 700. And then I'm going to uh, get back to my main comp, import my logo here and also import my metal texture below my logo. And then I'm also going to make this texture smaller just so, just so it's large enough for my logo. You can also actually stretch it out, it doesn't matter. And then change the track math to alpha math. And now we have, uh, if we change it back to full, our texture onto our logo, which looks pretty great already. And then we're going to select our logo and our metal texture. And go to layer, pre-compose, and uh, rename this to logo textured. Okay. Then search for bevel alpha. We're going to apply this to our logo here and make it like four, maybe. Yeah, that looks all right. And you can also increase the intensity just a bit and uh, to whatever you like. After that, you can go to effects, color correction. Well, effect, color correction, curves and decrease the shadows and increase the highlights. So like a small S here, maybe a little bit less on the shadows, more in the highlights. And now we get like a, yeah, like a nice punch in our uh, logo, which looks great. You can also add some um, sharpening by going to effects, um, blur and sharpen and, and sharp mask and increases like 150. And maybe this to four, well, 150 is too much. Just to show you what you can do. Okay, so now we have some nice punch in the sharpening, okay. So we have our logo right here and actually everything is done uh, for the texturing. This looks all right. And now we're going to apply an effect that I really enjoyed the last time that I have been using it and that actually brought the result that you just saw at the beginning of this tutorial. But it's an effect that's barely used and it's coming with After Effects, so it's not an external plugin and it gets you really cool results. So I'm going to click on my logo texture and search for card dance. And I'm going to apply this on my logo here. So right off the batch, it doesn't do anything. And actually we first need a, another layer to actually tell this layer what to do. Uh, so we're going to create a new solid here and rename this to noise. We're going to add an effect 
blur and well um, noise and grain actually and add a fractal noise here we're also going to increase the contrast to 125 and increase the complexity to 10 and maybe the transform to 200 okay something like this once you have done that go to layer pre-compose this layer and fractal noise comp and also move all the attributes in the new composition, click OK. So now we have a composition with a noise that is going to generate the effect that we just applied and that's the card dance. We're going to disable this layer by just um, clicking on the eye here, go to the logo textured, and then we're going to choose the rows and columns to columns follow rows, so it's just a square pixel, and we're going to change this to 50. Um, at the gradient layer one, we're actually going to choose our fractal noise now. So now if we're going to do something like at the Z position here and choose the source to be intensity one, we're going to see something happens. So if we increase the multiplier, everything flies into space. And you can see that we have squares here. If you have a look at my example, you can barely see these squares. And that's because I've done something crazy. Um, right here we have the rows and it's 50. I have changed them to a thousand. So a lot. So uh, if you don't have a very fast computer, be cautious if you're going to do this. Make sure your project is saved and then try to apply it because it's possible that After Effects is going to crash if your computer can't handle it. So um, start at 50, do your animations and after you have done everything you can yeah, increase this number to render it out. So don't increase it to a thousand once you're still working on it um, because it's really going to uh, change things. Because right here, let me do 200 and you're also going to see a lot of detail. But let me work with this for now because I have a, a okay computer, so it's okay fast. And let's go to like one second, change the multiplier to zero and click on the stopwatch here, move ahead like to the end of the timeline and increase this number by a lot. So maybe something like this should work fine. And now if you're going to play this back, you're going to see that it's already being very slow. So I am, I'm at full resolution at a pretty fast computer and it's already running very slow. So we're going to drop this down to like a third and then it's going to render really quickly. Actually, even with a third, it's still being very slow, but you can see this effect is incredibly nice. So it's it's really nice and I love this, um, yeah, this kind of result. So if we're going to play this back, we're going to see it just transforms itself. So that's really cool. Um, so another thing we can do is press U on the keyboard to reveal these two keyframes and then right click here. Well, actually just right click on the first one and right click keyframe assistance and easy ease. Then go to the graph editor by clicking on this button and then just drag this out. So now it's really going to start very slowly and shatter it out. So that's going to make it look very cool. Another thing you can do is um, make a opposite movement. So right now everything is coming towards the camera. So you should animate the camera going inwards and that's going to give it an even more epic feeling. So let's do that by going here to the um, position here, uh, camera position click on the Z position at the beginning of our timeline and then move ahead at the end of our timeline and decrease this so it really moves inwards like so. And if we're going to animate this, it's coming closer to the camera and then all of a sudden it's going to start shattering apart and yeah, make it look very cool. Like each time I do this animation, I'm like, nice. Imagine this in 3D and coming closer to you. So that, that, that'd be cool. Okay, um, I'm actually going to try that someday. Okay, so now we have our logo coming towards camera. Really cool. You can also do some uh, small changes in the camera rotation here. So on the Z rotation, right at the start where the um, logo is going to shatter apart, click on the stopwatch, move to the end of the, key, uh, well, of the timeline, and then rotate it like let's say 90 degrees. Press U on the keyboard to reveal that keyframe and also right click easy ease, so easy ease, there we go. Go to the graph editor and also uh, make this like that. 
and we can put this away. Okay, so now we have a nice gradual uh, rotation. So that's going to look very cool as well. So now we have like that extra animation coming in. So a camera moving inwards, the logo coming towards the camera and while the camera is moving in, it's also rotating and all these movements together make it look like a lot more detailed, a lot more, yeah, epic, so. That's what we have right now. And now you can see all these squares and if you don't wanna see that, you just have to bump up the rows here. So if you're going to make this a thousand, you can wait a little bit. You can even make this 10,000 if your computer can handle it. Well, I'm not sure if I can. I've never tried it. Maybe 2,000 should be still working fine. Oh, 1,000 is actually the maximum number you can use. I didn't know that. Okay, so um, now that you have 1,000, you can still see all the particles. And you can get rid of these uh, using some fake motion blur. Um, but if you don't have that, maybe we can try it with the regular status here and create a motion blur uh, for the layer here and also enable motion blur for the layer and see if that works and it works pretty nicely I guess but it could be more so um, what I have done actually in my preview is two options you can use CC force motion blur which is going to work fine and it's going to look uh, nice by increasing this number to 32 but you're going to see it takes a lot of time so it's going to take a lot of time to calculate you can see um, let's try to wait uh, well, no, I'm not going to waste your time. It's going to take forever to calculate. So if you have time, do it with the free alternative. But what I am using here is Real Smart Motion Blur. And this is actually a external plugin, I'm sorry. But if you're going to apply this to your effect, increase the number to uh, like two, um, you're going to see that it's going to calculate a lot faster. So in a few seconds, yeah, okay, there we go. We already have fake motion blur and this is going to make it look even better in my opinion. Motion blur really gives a sense of motion to your image and it's going to make it more realistic, I guess. And your eyes always make something motion blur. If something goes fast, you're going to see it in a motion blur. And if it's too sharp, it's going to look fake. It's not going to look right. And that's why you should apply fake motion blur to some things. Like if you're going to do an animation, uh, like in my previous tutorial, you can see that I'm also using the motion blur from After Effects. Uh, because if you move something in After Effects, you can apply it uh, inside of After Effects. But if you use something externally of, or you have already created an animation, you have to make it fake motion blur, let's say. And that's where Real Smart Motion Blur is a really um, good help at. So we can see that it's very slowly once the motion blur is applied. Um, but it's really worth uh, waiting. So if you don't want to use the motion blur, don't use it. Uh, it's not a big deal, um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you the possibility. So I'm not actually going to wait. Uh, you can see it in, in the preview that the motion blur really gives a nice uh, finishing look to it. So another thing we can do is go to effects and apply some glow here. So we get some nice highlights and I'm actually going to change it to full right now because I want to see the complete detail of our logo. Okay, you can see at full detail how cool it looks to be yeah, coming together like this. And actually, if you want a different kind of motion, just go into the fractal noise and change this type. So if we're going to change this to like uh, 150 and change the transform to 100 and we get back to the yeah uh, main comp, you're going to see that it's going to have a different kind of explosion. So I did like the previous one, so I'm going to keep that one. Um, but it's completely up to you. Try to mess around with fractal noise and please let me know in the comments below what you can come up with. If you have something like a crazy result or something that really looks cool, show me. I would love to see what you can come up with, really. Okay, so uh, go to the logo and yeah, play around with the glow here. I'm going to uh, decrease the intensity, duplicate the glow and also increase um, maybe to 100 and then duplicate it again. and maybe to 2 or 350 there we go now we have like a really nice explosion um, and then what you can also do is play with the background go to effects uh, generate and maybe use a ramp or gradient ramp use a blue color blue dark 
color, make it a ramp. Well, actually, this should be the dark blue, and this should be black. Okay. And there we go. Um, we can position this here in the center, or maybe in the corner. A little bit better. Just to give it a little bit of detail and also add some noise in the background or we can actually create a new adjustment layer on top and add some grain, add grain, final output size should be 0.2, make intensity also a little bit lower. And this is going to add some filmic look to it so maybe the intensity is a little bit too much even there. So 0.1 maybe. Okay, there we go. And now we have uh, something like this. What I also did is found a lens flare that I could use online and I use this image here. I'm actually going to solo my background layer and my lens flare here so it's going a little bit faster. And you can see the quality is actually pretty bad but I scaled it up here, went to color correction curves and decreased the shadow so I get rid of the banding here increased the highlight so I get a little bit more contrast, went to the blue channel and increased the blue channel. And then I changed the toggle switches, the mode to add. You can also add some glow if you want to. I really love glow. Um, yeah. If you look at my tutorials, you probably already know that. There we go. And then what I did is press P on the keyboard, went to the beginning of the timeline clicked on the stopwatch, also pressed S on the keyboard, clicked on the stopwatch and pressed U on the keyboard to reveal these keyframes, moved ahead and then I uh, kind of moved it upwards but also stretched out the, um, the lens flare so it actually kind of moves uh, with the camera like something like this and this is a small animation into the lens flare that makes it look a lot better. Also put it below the adjustment layer that we just created and now we have our final yeah, work. So it's actually done, that's all you had to do. And we have this composition, add some motion blur to it and it's going to look a lot better. Um, but yeah, that's it. So we can also create some adjustment layer and maybe add some, yeah, LUTs like, you know, <laughs> a little bit of self-advertisement, but it's actually going to help, I guess if I'm going to apply a color LUT of one of my LUTs that you can find on my website. There we go. Um, I'm going to be using the punch, I guess. And click open. And then maybe lower the opacity because it's a little bit too intense. Yeah, it's going to look pretty cool. Maybe 35. And it's going to give it a little bit of punch to the logo, so just to give it some film style, uh, you can use that, um, but it's completely up to you. You can also use the curves if you want to, but without the effect and width. So a small change, but it really helps to, yeah, make it look even cooler. So that was my tutorial for today. I, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like, also subscribe to the channel for more and let me know in comments below what you can come up with. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.